All right, hey everybody. So now you know that I will be hiking the Appalachian Trail starting in February of 2023. So you might be wondering, what am I gonna be carrying on my back that's gonna help me get all the way to Maine? So I thought it would be great to do a quick gear video um, of what I have chosen. I've been planning this trip for years and years. So I have read countless blogs, watched countless YouTube videos of hikers before and after. Um, choosing luxury items, not choosing luxury items. And uh, I think I've got a pretty good um, grasp of what I actually will need and hopefully not a lot of uh, fear-based items. Um, my base weight um, without food and water is 18.4 pounds. Um, I wanted to be around 16, 17, but the winter gear kind of adds up a little bit. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour of what I will be carrying on my backpack starting out on my trek up to Katahdin, Maine. All right, so now that I have turned my dining room into a gear closet, let's take a look at what my final chosen items are going to be for my Appalachian trail through hike. So my first item, one of the most important is my backpack, which I have chosen the Gossamer Gear Mariposa 60 liter bag. This was my final choice on my pack and it is outfitted um, with a water bottle sleeve holder from Chicken Tramper and my Zolio um, SOS saddle. I've chosen a quilt over a sleeping bag and I have the Enlightened Equipment Revelation um, 10 degree 850 down. This thing packs down to like nothing, but man, it is so fluffy. It's like laying on a cloud when I get in it. I have also added a liner. Um, this gives me, this is a C to Summit um, reactor liner. It gives me, says up to 14 degrees um, additional comfort in my sleeping bag. And then my sleeping pad is the Nemo. And um, I got this one because it is uh, a watch. My tent that I love is the Big Agnes Copper Spur UL two person. It is a two person tent. Um, it only weighs a little over three pounds um, and I love it. I love one of the things it's freestanding so I don't need to be, you know, I don't have to stake it down. And I did spring and spend the money for the footprint and this allows me to set up my tent um, set up the rain fly without the tent. So if it's raining in about 30 seconds, I can get coverage and then set up my tent underneath it. Um, to keep my pad from sliding around and to protect it from getting punctures, I just have the one eighth um, pad, you know, that everybody's using. I don't remember where I got this one from. They didn't have them where everybody was getting. So I found it somewhere else, but I will have links to everything below um, if I don't mention it um, specifically in the video. These are down booties. So these will keep my feet warm at night when it's cold. Um, I just got them off of Amazon. And then these are my sleep clothes. So I will keep those sleep clothes in a bag, in the bag with my sleeping bag to keep everything nice and dry. And I just have some inexpensive fleece, um, sleeping pants, some wool socks, and, um, and just a, a heavy shirt to wear um, for sleeping in. All right, now we are going to go with my rain gear. I just have some cheap, like $10 rain pants um, that I got off of Amazon. This Columbia rain jacket was one that I think I picked up at Goodwill years ago for something and decided to use it. It's a little heavier than like the frog togs, but it keeps me dry. I wore it out in the Florida rain. It kept me dry and it's pretty good with breathability. So I'm just gonna take it and uh, and then, and you know, it take the extra whatever couple ounces that it's gonna weigh. Um, this is my puffy coat, and I actually, uh, my family all has one. Joe has one, my son has one. We got them at Decathlon for like $60, and they work really, really well, so um, as far as keeping warm. Um, one of my favorite pieces of gear that I'm excited to try is my alpaca hoodie. I spent a lot of money on this, um, because a lot of people have them and love them. It is made out of alpaca. Extremely warm, breathable, don't hold the, the stink. And uh, so I'm excited to try that out. And I got that from the Appalachian Gear Company. Um, what I'm going to wear on the daily, uh, I'm looking at the weather and it's going to be in the upper 70s when I start. So I obviously might, probably won't be wearing that. But uh, I just got these from Bay Leaf Pants off of Amazon and they're water resistant. I'm just gonna go with these because they're water resistant. They're very stretchable. They're lightweight. 
and uh, you know I have enough room in them because they're stretchable to just wear my shorts underneath so if it gets warmer or my legs get warmer during the day I can just shed the pants and these I don't shoot I'm trying I got these shorts off at 32 degrees I wore them on the foothills trail I love them they're baggy they're long enough in the inseam to prevent chafing and stuff like that they have a small zipper pocket on the left the pocket on the right fits my cell phone love them I have a couple pairs of those um this is just a Patagonia uh, shirt that I picked up at REI last week that was actually on the used gear thing. I think I paid like $12 for it or something, so can't go wrong with that. And then this is just another um, long sleeve base weight shirt, real thin and breathable um, that I got off of 32 Degrees. So I love 32degrees.com. Um, they have a lot of reasonable stuff for base weights and all of that. Uh, my shoe of choice is the Hoka's. I love these. Um, this is the six, and they no longer are making these. They came out with the seven, and there's a one millimeter difference in the drop. So I went on Hoka.com, and I ordered all four pairs because I just haven't been able to find a shoe that I love as much as um, the sixes. So um, I, will be, I will be wearing those, and I've got three more pairs here at the house. Um, these are my Dirty Girl Gators. If you don't know what these are for, these basically, they hook to your shoe here. You'll see me wearing them this week. They hook to your shoe right here, and then they go down over, and I, you add Velcro, and they go to the back, and they just keep dirt, little stones. You know when you're taking a walk, you get stones in your shoe? Um, that that kind of gets to be a pain. You got to take a you know, 15, 20-pound backpack off to get a stone out of your shoe. Um, I'll also have a buff. Um, that I'll wear either on my head, around my neck, if I need extra warmth, or over my face if it gets a little chilly. My socks are in Gingy, um, toe socks. It's so funny because I remember wearing these in the 70s when I was a kid. Yes, I'm dating myself. And you wore them to school. Like, they were in colors and designs and everything. Well, they keep you from getting blisters. In between your toes are not rubbing together. So, um, I will be wearing those. And then um, I have Darn Tough, but I'm going to wear these Smart Wool um, socks that I also picked up. So I have both Darn Tough and the Smart Wool just because the Smart Wool has like a thicker cushion. And I think especially starting out getting my trail legs and everything, just give my feet that extra cushion. But if I want to go switch over to the Darn Tough, that's my backup pair. So I have one of each. Um, also, this um, little blue cover right here is my... Pack cover that will go over my entire pack um, to keep everything inside of it dry when it's raining. One of the things that I did want to mention is inside my pack, because um, I did forget, I will have a compactor bag inside my pack. So that'll go inside my pack and then especially like my sleeping bag and sleep pad and my sleep clothes and stuff will go inside there to just make, you know, as a double to keep... You don't want to just rely on a pack cover to keep everything in your pack dry. Um, I just have a few backup clothing items that uh, I, you know, I'm not going to have on every day. Obviously, I have a fleece hat. I'm not a, I'm not a hat wearer, but um, I did get a real lightweight cap, and that'll do really good, especially with my raincoat to keep the hood over covering from the rain. I have this just, you know, pair of just warm warm gloves and then I just have uh, rain mitts that go over your gloves if it's raining to keep my hands um, from getting wet in my gloves and keep them dry. I picked up this buff off of REI on clearance um, online for like seven bucks and it's actually a re really unique buff because it's half buff and half fleece so I figure I'm probably going to end up sleeping with this a lot because I can cover my face with the fleece if it's cold um, but then I can just use it as a buff. So it's kind of like, I'm not really sure whether it's going to be more beneficial to sleep with or more beneficial during the day. And I think the weather will determine that. Um, I have another underlayer of pants just to wear under my hiking, um, joggers if I need a little bit more warmth. And then there's just a really lightweight tank, tank top that I got from 32 degrees. I love this tank top. It's so light and it does, it just, it dries so fast. It's ridiculous. Um, these are my darn tough socks, this backup pair of socks, and another pair of Injinji socks. These are short ones. Right here is my basic electronics that I will be carrying. I am carrying two 10,000 amp um, power banks from Nightcore. 
Um, they're a little pricey, but they're the weight, you know, I want, I'm trying to save as much weight as I can, um, you know, because weight is a big thing. It's the thing that takes people off trail and causes injury. So um, to spend a little bit more to hopefully improve my success chances, I'm going to do it. Um, I did go with the Nightcore um, rechargeable headlamp. It's only like an ounce and a half. I don't have to worry about carrying batteries. Um, and then, of course, I have a, I actually have a three-prong charger. Um, and then my phone cord. And one of these is my cord for my Zolio. And then this little three-ounce pump that'll pump my mattress up in seconds. I know everybody's got them you now. Um, you know, the stuff sacks take a little bit of time. And uh, obviously, you don't want to be breathing into a, after you've gone up a mountain to get your bed. So I went ahead and sprung it sprung for it because so many other people have it. It's only three ounces. Uh, then I also have my trekking poles right here. These are just an Amazon pair. We've all had these in the family. Um, they've all they've worked really well. I mean, they've been on many hikes, so I'm just going to stick with these. I have some duct tape and some backup Luco tape on there for blisters and any repair that I need that's right on my trekking poles. And I've been back and forth about taking my umbrella um, six Moon Designs umbrella, six ounces. I have the clip that goes on my backpack so I don't have to hold it. And I don't know if I would necessarily always use it hiking if it's just drizzling, but if I get to camp and it's pouring, like setting things up or, you know, or even, you know, just go into the privy or whatever, having snack or whatever when it's pouring, being able to take your umbrella out, I'm just going to take it for now. I can send it home if I decide it's not worth the, the six ounces. So, I will carry a fanny pack. I always, I love it. I can keep snacks in it. Um, I have my headphones in here and my tripod will be in here. Um, I keep chapstick in there. I keep snacks in there. My phone will be in there. And what I love about it is when I'm in town, um, I don't have to take my pack with me, but then I can have my wallet and my phone and everything and I'm not having to carry something extra or having to make sure I have pockets in what I have. So I'm going to go ahead and, and keep the fanny pack. I like it. This is my water filtration system. I have a two liter CNOC water bag. Um, and then my Sawyer squeeze, not the mini, I have the regular. And then I also, um, in my repair kit, I do have a backup O-ring. Um, I think I actually have two in case another hiker needs one. And, you know, they don't weigh anything. And then I just took an old Sawyer bag that I had and I just cut it in half. And then if I need a scoop um, for a lower water source, I can just, use this to scoop water and then put it in my bag, but that will filter filter my water. I have a little cork ball to roll out my um, calves and my feet and whatever else might be ailing me at the end of the day. And a uh, suggestion was to keep it in your hip pocket with your, with your pump and your headlamp and you'll use it more because it's right there, it's not stuck in a bag. So I'm gonna do that in 53 and so I need to make sure that I'm doing stuff like that. Um, here's my little wallet. Um, so that's where I'll keep obviously my ID and credit card and stuff like that. Sunglasses, just cheap pair. I've had them forever and ever. Uh, this is my toilet bag, if you want to call it. Um, it's got toilet paper. Um, I've got some, um, you know, uh, pet bags in there for anything dirty, if you know what I'm saying. Um, this is my pee style so I can stand up and pee. My trowel to dig a cat hole. My Kula cloth. Um, so you don't need as much toilet paper and, um, I am going to try a bidet. I am going to take a bidet with me. Um, so I ordered basically this off of Amazon and it screws into a, um, just a bottle. So I have like a propel water bottle I'm going to bring cause it's a little bit thicker and just keep it empty. And I'm going to try and, and use this and see how it works. Um, the reviews are really good on it. So I'll probably be ditching some of what's in this toilet kit. Um, once I get out there and see, like, what do I actually like and what actually works well? Um, and then I'll probably ditch what I don't need. Um, I watched Hiking with Braids video. This was a great suggestion. I have this little Nalgene bottle, wide mouth Nalgene bottle. If you have to, um, you know, pee in the middle of the night and you don't want to get out of your tent, out in the cold, out in the rain, out in the snow, um, whatever, you can just pee in here at night and then just... Um, you know, just pour it out the next day. So, um, I'm going to just, I'm going to try that. And, uh, you know, like I said, if I don't end up using it, I'll send it home or throw it out or I'll probably throw it out. <laughs> I wouldn't send it home if I've peed in it, but you know, I'm just, there's a couple things. They don't weigh a lot. I'm going to throw them in there and find out what works best for me because what works best for me might not work best for you, but I'm, 
If they're minimal weight, I'm gonna take it and then see where it goes from there. This is my, kind of like my be all my hygiene. Um, and I'll probably like do a separate video that just goes into detail with what's in here because I have a repair kit for my tent, like toothbrush and toothpaste and medications and you know, some emergency creams and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, and that's gonna vary for everybody depending on what they need. Um, but uh, I'll probably do a separate little video on what I'm gonna carry on that. These are my two um, food bags, um, you know, that are help with reducing the smell and, uh, and my food and stuff and trash will be inside these bags and then um, inside my, my food bag. So this is my food bag um, that I got from uh, Z-Packs and um, it comes with the, uh, the rock sack and the paracord. Um, to hang my food from a tree. And um, so these bags, my food will basically go in here, any trash will go in here, and then it will go in this bag and get hung from a tree if there is not a uh, bear bag or bear hang cables at the tent site or if there's not a bear box there. So that everything is as smell proof and safe as I can possibly do, obviously, to protect the bears. So I am carrying a spork, so I don't have to carry a spoon and a fork. This is just a homemade cozy uh, made out of reflectix with some duct tape. So basically what I do is when I boil, I don't cook anything in my cook pot. I don't, because it's, you have to then wash it out and if it dries on there. So I use either freezer bags or the bag that the food comes in and just put the water in and then seal that bag and then stick it inside my cozy and then just close it up and let it sit for whatever five or seven minutes. It keeps the heat in the bag so that it will, so that your pasta or, you know, dehydrated meals or whatever will cook. And then I don't have to worry about washing out a pot. So this is my, um, this is my cook pot with, I have my fuel canister in there. Um, so, you know, I have my cook pot and then my fuel canister is in here. Um, it's a full one right now, so it's a little heavier because of that. You always wanna wrap that in something um, so that your, your pot doesn't rust out. And uh, then I have a lid. So, you know, I'll probably drink coffee out of this, but I'm not gonna cook food noodles or anything else inside that pot and have to deal with scrubbing it out. So I just, I just don't wanna do that. Um, I'm, I'm going on trails to not do dishes, not to do dishes on trails. So make it as easy as possible. And then, of course, my stove is, I have the MSR. I feel pretty good about everything that I have. There's probably a few things that I'll, I'll will ditch once I get out there. But with an 18.4 base weight, I'm feeling pretty good about it. So I would love any comments for you experienced um, through hikers. If there's anything that I may have forgotten, any other places where I could save weight or switch things out, um, then leave them in the comments below. I would love to hear, you know, from your expertise because this is my first through hike, um, my first long through hike. I've done a couple days at max, but um, so, you know, I'm certainly open for suggestions and learning and I would love to hear your comments in below. And I look forward to this journey, sharing my journey with you. I certainly hope that you'll follow along. So definitely like this video and um, subscribe to my channel. And I hope to bring you a lot of great information and some beautiful sights and scenery.